reasons we even do this. So you come to your mat or to the floor and just bring your hands to your low belly and tune into your breath. Maybe take a nice, long, slow, deep breath in and exhale with a sigh. And feel your body beginning to release. Release needs to happen before anything, especially of the hip flexors because they're so tied into the nervous system. When they can release, then we can warm up and stretch out the muscles and move the joints in the way that they're meant to move. Nice, soft, easy, natural breath here. Just noticing how your hands might be moving as you're breathing. Feel the stability of the back body. And feel how your breath and your hands on your body keeps you right here in the present moment. So begin to take a little bit longer breath and exhale with a sigh. Then walk your feet back in a little bit closer to you and gather up your left leg to bring it in towards you. As you bring it in towards you, you can take a moment to just curl up a little bit, rounding your head and shoulders away from the floor and then curling back down. Then once you've curled back down, keep the weight of your arms on your leg as you slide your right leg out away from you. Balancing on the center of your right heel without letting your leg turn out or turn in. Just keep it nice and long and strong. And we'll lift up again here. Inhale, and then exhale, head, shoulders, upper back. Draw your leg in towards your body. And then release, come back down. Once you come back down, release your legs, stretch it down beside your right leg and stretch your arms overhead. Reaching away from you, stretching your whole body with a, a stretch that doesn't need any instruction at all. Maybe a yawn too. And then we'll bring the right leg in. Same idea, we're gonna center the left leg on the floor so the heel is centered. Pull the leg in towards you and curl up towards your leg. And then release and come back down. Stretch out your right leg, take the arms overhead, and now we'll do it as a moving warm up. So each time you exhale, you can bring your left leg in, curl up, and inhale and release. Exhale to curl up. And you can do this in your own pace, using your breath to determine the pace. If you end up mixing up the arms and leg movements and the breath, it doesn't really matter. The whole point is that you're moving with awareness of the breath. And you're moving through what I call the four corners of the body, the two hips and the two shoulders. You can also add a movement like this, so you curl up this way and circle your arms out. So we get a little bit different movement through the shoulders. Circle in and circle out. But of course, you can do any of these things, extending them a little bit longer, maybe even holding them, maybe even keeping your head down on the floor as you curl your leg in. Take one more. Keep whichever leg you have in your butt into your, your body and bring the other one in. Wrapping your arms around the shins or even underneath your knees if that's a problem to close your knees that much. And then just rock a little bit from side to side. If your legs are close to you, you can notice you'll be rolling a little bit more to the mid back and low back. But if you take your knees away from you, you can massage down low or maybe on your buttocks. Legs can separate a little bit. You can even start to turn your legs in opposite directions. So it's not just the spine that's moving, we're starting to move the hip joints as well. And in both directions, you can take them, circle them out, you can circle them in. Just a little bit of freestyle movement here. Of course, still using the breath, finding how the breath initiates the movement. And then bring both feet down to the floor and separate them so they're as wide as your mat. 
Take your arms out to the sides and slowly rock your knees over to one side and then the other side. And what we have happening here is my right leg, as I take my right leg to the side, I've got an external rotation and an internal rotation on my left leg. A little bit of rotation through my spine too. So warming up through the lower part of the body. Although my upper body is doing some of the work too, because I'm using my shoulder blades, allowing them to move. And then we can add in some arms here too, so you create a little bit of a window with your arms, and as your legs go to one side, your arms go to the other. And it can be more than just taking your arms to the side, you can follow your, with your head. But as they go to the side, you can almost lift your arms away from you so that you're lifting the opposite shoulder blade away from the floor. Do this as many times as you like. It kind of feels good. We'll revisit this one in a second. I just wanted you to have another directional movement for the hips and the shoulders, the four corners of the body. And then come back into the center again, bring your arms down, set up your feet, and we'll lift the hips straight up this time. Roll the shoulders back and turn your palms up. Press lightly into the back of your head and lift your chin away from your chest so that we keep a little bit of a curve in the neck. Lift your heels up and slowly roll down through the back of the body so that every part of the back of the body is touching in order. Once you get to the hard part, take a few more breaths inviting the release and the engagement of the front body to happen. Heels can come back down and we can repeat. Hips come up, heels come up, slowly roll down through the spine. We'll do two more like this. Take them in your own time. Shoulders roll back, hips lift up. So we move into another directional movement for the shoulders called extension and then we roll down. One last time. I'm also starting to find that I'm moving in such a slow way that I'm in, engaging muscles through the back of the body and my abdomen. So one more option you can do with this, as well as the gluteus muscles too, the buttocks. You can lift, lift your heels, reach your arms forward and curl down this way. So we start to tone a little bit more, slowing down the action. We can add this movement too as you lift your arms up over the head, the hips lift. So then heels lift and slowly curl down. We'll just do two more like that. I've lost track, so I'm going to do one more. <laughs> And then because that was a lot of work, I feel it in my low back, I'm gonna bring my legs back into my body. Never hurts to come back here and just do this little massage in the back of the body. And then bring your feet back down to the floor. Take your arms out to the sides and roll your legs over towards the right, taking your right arm up beside your ear, rolling onto your shoulder so we've got a little bit more of the body working here. We'll turn towards the back and just do a little half push up here. So create a little bit of strengthening through the arms. As we do the rotation, you can take to the other side, lift up, a little half push up here. And we'll do this as many times as you like. We're going to do one more on each side. A little bit more strenuous than what we've done so far with an option to take your legs out like this, hands wider, maybe even a few push-ups. But you can decide what works for you this morning or this afternoon or this evening. Last one here. Two for me. Since we did two on the other side. And then since I'm already in this almost sitting position. I'm just going to stay here and roll over, bring my mat or my blanket in so I can put my knees on that. And I know I'm going to need my blocks, so I'm going to bring my blocks in. You can do them though without, but I find it's just a little bit more helpful to have them here. Tuck this in so you can see. 
what I'm doing. So come into table pose and lift and move the spine. I'm always totally open to kind of freestyle movement, just getting the body to move the way it wants to move. I'm not sitting back too far towards the heels as we go to the side to side so we don't twist the knees too much. And then here's another action I like to do. I like to push down and forward with my hands and bring my elbows towards the floor, but not landing. And imagine I have a ball in front of my nose and I roll it forward. And then I can come and extend my spine here and repeat. It's a little bit more strenuous or a little bit more action around my shoulder joints. My elbows want to go out to the sides, but I'm going to tell them no, not to. You can do that two or three times. The next time I come forward into table, I'll walk my knees a little bit closer and bring my right foot up. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, come back down, bring your hands to the blocks, pivot on your heel and rock back. So now I'm starting to lengthen to the back of my leg. You can stay on your blocks and alternate between these movements. Or you can come up in a lunge position so that you start to open up through the front of the hip. Let's go to the other side. Take the other foot forward, inhale up, and exhale down, releasing back. Your leg doesn't have to go completely straight, but we're working on lengthening through the whole leg here. Any variation of this would be great. We can switch back to the first leg again for one more thing. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hold on to my right leg's forward, so I'm going to hold on to my left wrist and spin my palm up. Elbow stays bent, but I'm going to lift my elbow up and lean over to the right. So we're going to lengthen into the side body. Then inhale, come back up and turn this into a twist, hooking my left elbow on my right knee, rotating this way. If I want more of a challenge, I can lift my back knee off the floor and then set it back down. The idea in the warm-up is just to keep moving rather than hold anything for too long. That way we're warming up through the whole body. Inhale up, hold on to your opposite wrist. So my left leg is forward, holding on to my right wrist, leaning forward and lifting my right elbow up opens up the side of the body, but also through the front of the right hip. Then I can come down and turn in into a rotation, hooking my elbow, inhale. As I press down through my hands and turn them forward, I can lift my belly up, lift my heart up, maybe lift my back knee up. Those are all options. Exhale, come back down, and now's the time for either downward dog or a half downward dog. Plant your hands so that your index finger bases can root and your index fingers are close to being parallel. Hug the floor like you're holding on to a big ball. Walk your knees back and send your hips back. So this would be half downward dog. Full downward dog. We tuck the toes under, press down and forward through the hands, lifting the knees off the floor, stretching the spine long first, and then maybe alternating, stretching one leg towards straight, then the other, releasing the backs of the legs. And then for the last few breaths here, take your heels back, stretching the soles of your feet, stretching the backs of the legs, lengthening, decompressing the spine, and then we can come down into a child's pose with either knees together or knees apart. And breath into the back of the body. And slowly bring yourself up. 